What is happening, everybody? MG here. MG covers bringing you a brand new sports handicapping video. Title is video high volume or low volume. What is the best approach for handicapping? Super fascinated with this topic here in the last couple months. Those of you that follow me will dive into that in just a second. If you're watching this video for the first time, greatly appreciate you subscribing to the channel and appreciate everybody um, that has watched the content. We had our biggest YouTube check. Not much because we have a little bit less than 2,000 subs, but it was the biggest YouTube check we've gotten um, in the history of the channel. So greatly appreciate those pe those of you that have subscribed and watch my videos regularly. Greatly appreciate that. If you want to follow me on social media, it's MG Covers, Covers spelled with a Z. So let's dive into this topic. Now, I want to say a couple, make a couple statements here first. Regardless of what you do in this business, the number one priority, because it is a business, if you're profitable and whatever you're doing might be unorthodox, that's okay because there are no rules in this business. The only rule, because it is a business, is to be profitable. So regardless of your approach, if you're profitable doing what you're doing, it might contradict something that I'm doing. You might disagree with something in the video, but the premise of this business is, like all businesses, if you're profitable, then what you're doing is correct. Okay. My original thought process or philosophy on volume, whether high volume or low volume, and you guys have heard me say this in the past, the less volume you play, the greater advantage you give yourself. The more volume you play, the greater advantage you give to the books. I have now concluded that that is not true. And I'm going to talk about and give you some actual real numbers to think about. And the first sport we're going to talk about is NFL. Now, this is absolutely crazy. Those of you know, we struggled NFL here to start the season, had to change the model. Model has been absolutely on fire here lately. You can see this is the model. Model plays 35 and 27, which is, what's that, 56%? Um, yeah, 56%. And that's playing about, look at last week here. We'll go through this. Last week it had model had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight plays. And then the week before that, look at this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten plays. So playing a lot of volume. And that 35 and 27 is recording weeks via the model from weeks four through weeks 11. So that's a lot of volume. Now, let's talk about why the high volume approach works for NFL. I first read Billy Walter's latest book. And if you have anything to do with handicapping, you want to get that book. It's um, can't remember the title, but just Google Billy Walters and that book will come up during his heyday. He said he averaged between five and 10 games a week in NFL, which, which at the time seemed ludicrous. And this is only for me three or four weeks ago, but now I have officially understood correctly why high volume approach is perfect for NFL and it's based on realistic numbers. The average, the most popular margin of victory in NFL is what? Three. The second most popular margin of victory is seven. And then after that, it's all those numbers basically in between that three and the seven. And I think there might be some that's outside of that. But three and seven are your, your biggest uh, key numbers, meaning the average margin of victory is going to be between that three and a seven. So in essence, it's only one score. It's the same in baseball if a team went in two to one, because even though it's three or seven in football, they only need a touchdown or a field goal. So therefore, this is the point I want to make. The lower the margin of victory in a sport, the more volume you would want to play. Okay, I'm going to say that again. The lower the margin of victory in a sport, the more volume you want to you would want to play. And let's let's look at an example. Let's say you concluded and you're handicapping here from last week. Let's use I, I think Minnesota is a good example. And to be realistic here, the model went one, two, three, four, five. I just grade spreads, but how you would have actually played it, you would have gone four and four because you'd have played Cleveland uh, minus two and a half, and that's basically the actual spread there. This is my line over here, and this is the um, Differential. So you'd have played Cleveland minus two and a half, Chicago plus seven and a half. You'd have played Philadelphia on the money line. They'd have won Green Bay on the money line. You'd have played Minnesota on the money line, but they would have lost. And then so you'd have went four and four, but still profitable. Okay. 
But again, back to that statement, because there's low volume, the the margin of victory is low in NFL. You want to play more volume. Now, let me show you this other. Um, this was from two weeks ago, dated November the 12th. You had five games in the NFL end on a game-winning field goal. So there is your proof right there that in, anything can happen. So all of those – so, for example, in this – they open up with the Washington, the Washington Seahawks. So if you concluded in your handicapping Washington was the best play, it ended up losing, right? So therefore, the approach should be instead of let's say you have six or seven games with value, you would be better off playing all seven of those games with value if the model's good. Now the model might not be good as opposed to taking those seven and trying to cherry pick which games are, are best. So if you go back and look at um, let's go back over here. So what I'm saying is, so we have, we had Tampa, Tennessee, Cleveland, Chicago, Philadelphia, Green Bay, Minnesota Rams. So trying to pick the best game out of those, that would have probably been difficult to do. Right. I mean, you say, well, maybe to pick Philadelphia. Well, I mean, it's easy to see that after you see the final score, but in retrospect, before the games, that's very difficult to do. Right. And if you would have used this philosophy here, where you'd have played the teams with the highest margin of, of differential, the first two would have lost, and this next one would have uh, won what the next four would have won. So the point I want to make with regards to NFL, you're better off playing more volume if the model is good. Now, let's go and look at – let me show you another example. This was from uh, NHL – yeah, over here on the right. This was from two days ago, NHL. So we played one, two, three, four, five, six plays in NHL. NHL is another sport that's going to require um, a lot of volume. Why? Because the margin of victory, it's very similar to soccer, and I'm going to get into soccer in just a second. But let me just make my point here. Calgary won four to three. Calgary was losing three to two going into the third, and they didn't score that tying goal until four minutes to go. Okay, LA Kings want to blow out. Nashville, we had Nashville. Nashville was down three to two going into the fourth. The Rangers were up two to one early and ended up losing six three. Tampa was blowing out Boston. And then Boston, I think, scored three goals in the third period and ended up um ended up losing, but still they I mean it was overtime. Anybody can win in overtime. And then finally, I think Florida Edmonton at one point that was tied up three to three. So if these were your plays with value via the model and they were, I mean, how would you determine which would be the, the best game to play? It would be very difficult to do because then if you tried to cherry pick that and you ended up picking Rangers, you'd have lost. If you ended up picking Boston, you'd have lost. So you're better off lowering your unit size, which here a unit for me is a thousand bucks. So we played one fifth unit. So we had one, two, three, four, five. So about twelve hundred dollars at risk. Ended up making a profit of four sixteen with an ROI of thirty percent. So there's your example. Now let's move on to NBA and share my thoughts here. Now this is the tracker and made some adjustments. This is basically the same model, but the way we're playing this now. If you look over here on the left, this is my line for the sport, my line for the game. And then the line for the books. And over here, this is the year to date. This is via the model. We haven't even played any games, but model has done really well with the changes that I've made because now I'm saying we're only going to play double digit favorites. Now, this is important. The average margin of victory in NBA is what? It's 11 points. So we have a greater margin of victory. So therefore, quote, less volume. I think I already deleted. I wish I would have showed this, but when we were playing a lot of volume, Using the quote old way, I was handicapping this. There's a couple videos you can see on that, and I may have I may have shared that. Yeah, the last video you can see that. The reason the high volume approach didn't work because of the average margin of victory. So now we can be a little bit more discreet because there's a higher margin of victory, and therefore you can see like yesterday was two plays Orlando Lakers. Before that, three, and that one day on 11 19 when we had one play. Uh, we had two on 11-18, and then 11-12 looks like there was a lot of volume there, and sometimes it happens. But for the most part, you can see it. it it's not really – I don't know what that average is out to be, but it looks like maybe 
two to three plays a day, two to three plays a day. Okay. So to sort of sum this up, the premise that I've always thought that the more volume you play, the bigger advantage you give the books is actually not true. And it's basically sport, sport dependent. Now, again, you may be playing I, a low volume approach with NFL and that may be successful. So I can't argue against that, but I'm just giving you some numbers and things to think about to potentially help your handicapping. For example, if you're playing one or two games in NFL and you're struggling right now, Therefore, you might want to consider playing more volume as well. All right. So with that said, I want to do give you some value here. And I want to go through my lines for um, NBA today. So, again, what I'm doing is I'm only playing double-digit favorites, and we have to have value. So for an away side, we have to have a certain amount of value. For a home side, we have to have a certain amount of value. So the first play we have, Brooklyn minus 11. We have Houston minus 13. We have New Orleans minus 11. And then finally, we have Lakers minus 21. So we go to the books here. So then the plays for today would be potential plays for today would be Brooklyn plus four opened up at plus three. Some books have already bumped it to plus four. But at this point, we're not um, using line movement as a consideration. So in the way I would play that would be on the money line. Um, Houston would be five and a half. We're getting an about seven and a half points of value there. New Orleans at plus two, that would be a potential play. And then finally the Lakers down here at plus one and a half. And again, I mean, plus two and a half. And again, that would be a play on the money line as well. So anyway, ho hopefully this video helps and sort of ad admitting on, on my part that I was probably wrong about the way I was thinking about um, high volume versus low volume. Hopefully you got some value out of that. Like this video, subscribe to the channel. If you want access to all my power rankings, you can get that for 50 bucks a month. We have a lot of uh, sports. We have NFL. We have college football, NBA. We're going to have NCAA basketball power rankings premiere a little bit later towards the end of this month, maybe 1st of December. Have to wait till teams have played at least five games. And with that 50 bucks, you also get access to all my coaching videos. I release a new coaching video every, other, every week. If you want access to all my plays, 100 bucks a month. You get access to everything I just mentioned, and the best value, if you join, instead of paying 100 bucks a month, you can pay $4.99, you save about $600, and you get access to everything on the website for $500. Greatly appreciate you watching. Talk to you guys soon. Peace.